Hello, everybody. Welcome to the ACS Student Convention. We are so thrilled and excited to welcome you to day one of the 2021 Student Convention. My name is Peggy Lee. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the director of chapters here at ACS. I'm based out of Houston, Texas, and I was a 3L at the very first student convention at Stanford Law in 2013. And so I'm so excited um, to join you today for our ninth student convention. So as you know, the convention is brought to you by the American Constitution Society, the country's foremost progressive legal organization with more than 200 student and lawyer chapters across the nation. We are celebrating our 20th anniversary this year of shaping national legal debates, nurturing the next generation of lawyers, judges, and advocates, and ensuring that law is a force to improve the lives of all people. We are dedicating this anniversary year to race in the Constitution and reckoning with the past for a more just future. If you don't already, we encourage you to follow ACS on social media, including on Twitter at ACS Law, and you can also find us online at www.acslaw.org. From there, you can join ACS and find out more information about our upcoming events and opportunities. So just as a reminder for folks, you are in the welcome session on day one of student convention. Right now, you're gonna hear from ACS President Rice, Russ Feingold and ACS Executive Vice President Zanel October. Immediately after this, there will be a discussion with Washington State Attorney General Bob Ferguson and Professor Sharmila Murthy on the role of state attorneys general. After that, there'll be a discussion on the intersection of environmental and systemic racism on Black, Indigenous, people of color communities with Professor Steph Tai, uh, Professor Rebecca Sosi, Selena Kyle, and Heejin Huang. And then our substantive programs will end today with a keynote remark from Tahir Duckett, civil rights litigator and advocate. Some of you will also have networking dinners tonight. Please see your agenda in your Hoofa app. And if you have any questions or need any assistance, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us on the Whova app, but you can also email us at campus at acslaw.org. Just a few more things. Um, don't forget, we are utilizing the Whova app for student convention. I have looked at it today and I know that many of you are already talking, but if you haven't engaged yet, we hope that you utilize the app, throw in your questions in there. Um, we also hope that you engage with other ACS leaders and speakers and us um, by you know, answering questions in the thread, um, getting engaged in virtual meetups. Um, we also hope that you tweet um, using the hashtag ACS students 2021. And now I'll pass the mic over to ACS president Russ Feingold. Thanks so much, Peggy. I am uh, really thrilled to be here with you today, all of the ACS students. Uh, one year ago, I joined ACS as its president. And at that time, of course, I, I knew that a lot was at stake. We saw that the right had succeeded in locking down so many of our courts with young, ideologically extreme nominees. And as I thought about our progressive law students throughout the country, I said that then, and I continue to feel this way now, that really what was happening is that the right was committing generational theft, intergenerational theft against your generation. A year ago, in one of my first interviews as ACS president, I noted that we need to mount our strongest fight yet to restore the rule of law and to have a fair shot at real progressive change. And that's exactly what we've been doing. What we've seen in the years since I took the helm of president of ACS has shown us exactly what has been at stake all along and why this fight is so important. Perhaps I don't need to review it, but we saw a global pandemic exacerbated by failed leadership, broadening income inequality, and hitting communities of color the hardest. While we're shut down and locked in, we saw the extreme pain that black and brown communities are suffering at the hands of government sanctioned police officers, too often resulting in murder and tragedy. We saw the frantic push to confirm large numbers of often unqualified extremists under President Trump, culminating in the spectacle of the last minute installation of Justice Amy Coney Barrett. We saw our democratic ideal of a peaceful transition of power fail with the insurrection at the Capitol, sanctioned by President Trump. We saw those insurrectionists face little resistance from the very same law enforcement people who tear gassed peaceful protesters just a few months prior. 
We continue to see lies about election fraud and hundreds of bills pushed through many state legislatures to suppress the vote from black and brown communities. We see continued racism and a rise in anti-Asian animus fueled by some members of our own government. And we saw it turn deadly last week. Even while in a global pandemic, racism, misogyny, and gun violence continue to plague this country. So there's really never been a time when our work at ACS has been more necessary. The very notion of our democracy and the country that you will inherit depends on the work that we do together. A year ago in taking the lead of this powerful organization and strong network, I made a, co a commitment to enhance the connections within our network and increase resources for our law student chapters and to build bridges between law students and uh, lawyer chapters. I started my presidency on the very first day a year ago with a visit to Howard Law School. And it was in conversations there with our ACS student leaders that our mission was really reinforced and enhanced for me. Student leaders told me when I mentioned the rule of law, they said, yes, the constitution is a great document, but in a lot of ways it wasn't made for us. The law doesn't always work for us. The law doesn't always make us comfortable. It was this conversation that continued to replay in my mind as I witnessed the tragedies over the past year. I came to realize that the attack on our democracy, the violence against communities of color, the insurrection at the Capitol, and everything we've faced since was not four years in the making, but 400 years in the making. The racist and violent vision of our nation was unfortunately written right into our founding document and some would sacrifice democracy before allowing another inch of progress toward equality. This is why this year, ACS's 20th anniversary, we thought it was crucial to directly confront some of the challenges presented by that founding charter, by our constitution. This year, as you've already seen for sure, our central theme is to confront the problems of racism in our constitution. Why should we revere a document written by many slaveholders that explicitly counted slaves as three-fifths of a person and excluded women, indigenous persons, and many others? I think we wanna think about how we can reconcile the constitution with its central failings and put an end to the scourge of racism and every consequence that has followed. How can we use law and policy to help us arrive at a third reconstruction? Is it time for this country to finally have a Truth and Reconciliation Commission of our own? We must meet the moment, deal with our country's very real flaws and demand our more perfect union. So we started these discussions earlier this month with a program on reckoning with the constitution. Next week, we'll have a discussion on founding failures the Constitution, the consequences of the Constitution's original sin on our criminal legal system. And these are just the beginning. We want student engagement on this, both through our national events and also at the law school level. We encourage you to organize programming. And yes, ACS staff will be very happy to assist you in suggesting and getting speakers or framing the discussion. So again, I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm honored to get to work with such an incredibly powerful student law network. You inspire me and drive us all to achieve our mission. And uh, one of the best things about this organization is the person who I'm gonna turn it over to right now, Zanel October, our executive vice president, who will share more about our anniversary and the ACS network, Zanel. Well, thank you, Russ. As Russ mentioned, our work is heavy and the task ahead of us is gigantic. We are dealing with centuries of white supremacy embedded in our legal system. As we look toward the fight ahead, it is also important for us to reflect back on what we've already been able to accomplish in our short 20 year lifespan at ACS. 
And that success is vivid when you examine the ACS network, which includes you. We were founded after Bush v. Gore when it was abundantly clear that conservatives set their aim on our independent judicial branch. In our 20 years, we have responded. Our chapters in conjunction with their local legal communities have identified talented progressive lawyers at every stage in their careers and given them the support necessary to obtain influential legal positions at the state and federal level. Now, ACS is playing a leading role in assembling a pool of potential judicial nominees for the Biden-Harris administration to consider. Central to this work is drawing together the local legal communities and prioritizing racial, ethnic, gender, sexual orientation, and practice area diversity. Hundreds of people have had conversations in their communities about who would be a great judge. The 52 working groups we have in 39 states have a clear mission to include people who have historically been underrepresented in the judicial nominations process. And the ACS network is better equipped now than ever before to meet this mission and make sure the courts better resemble the communities they serve. 20 years ago, we were founded at Georgetown Law School. Student chapters were central to our founding and we invested in supporting our law student network. We have seen the growth of our network and the advancement of our ACS leaders. It's been especially remarkable to see how far reaching the ACS network is including ACS network members who started with us as law student chapter leaders. Some of our former student chapter leaders include a solicitor general, partners at major law firms, elected officials, staff of elected officials, nonprofit organization heads, in-house counsel, law professors, and more. You can see where I'm headed here. ACS is an organization that you join in law school and sometimes even before, and you remain a member for the duration of your legal career and beyond. ACS's network is vast and inclusive. And just like we will do today and throughout this week's student convention, ACS prioritizes and values our network members getting to know and work with each other. We encourage you to research your law school's ACS history. Who was your law school chapter's first president? What are they doing now? Would they be willing to mentor you and your board members? The answer to that, by the way, is usually yes. It is not just your own ACS alumni network. ACS has lawyer chapters in over 50 cities and regions and an at-large lawyer chapter that coordinates virtually even in non-pandemic times for those who may not be able to engage with the traditional lawyer chapter. Our lawyer chapters offer communities for progressive lawyers in all lines of legal work and at all stages of their career. The lawyer, chapter offer, lawyer chapters offer robust programming that promote our vision advancing and defending democracy, justice, equality, and liberty, securing a government that serves the public interest and guarding against the abuse of law and the concentration of power. The programming and activities tackle national and local issues and help to shape the debate and motivate action. For example, Derek Chauvin's trial is expected to start on Monday. Our Minneapolis St. Paul lawyer chapter has organized a series that will start this Friday and go every two weeks until the verdict. Check it out and get to know your ACS community there and elsewhere and plan to stay a leader within it. We have law students registered for this convention from 104 different law schools. I'm thrilled to work with you to build a more equitable and just America and can't wait to see where you'll be in the next 20 years. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to work with you all. I do look forward to meeting you in person one day, hopefully soon. And now I'll turn things over to my amazing colleague, Jordan. Thanks so much, Danelle, and hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan Blisk. My pronouns are he and him, uh, and I'm an associate director of chapters here at ACS. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and move into the roundtable portion of today's program. Um, this is a time for you to get to know Russ and Zanel uh, and to ask whatever questions you may have about ACS, our work, or anything else. They're going to go ahead and get started with some pre-prepared questions to warm up. And in the meantime, we ask that you share your questions for them in the chat. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand things back over to Russ and Zanel. All right. Russ, I was looking forward to this part. You're on mute, by the way. Um, and I'll kick, us, I'll kick us off with a question, if, if you don't mind. Of course not. All right. What drew you to lead ACS and at this time? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, a couple of years ago, I was uh, Zanel completing, uh, or in the, actually in the middle of continuing to be a visiting professor at various law schools across the country. 
both on the West Coast and the East Coast and uh, in my home state of Wisconsin. And I got a, a call uh, asking whether I would consider uh, applying for the position of president of ACS. Now, uh, I knew about ACS. Uh, I didn't know, obviously, as much as I do now, but I had had good experiences with ACS at a number of law school campuses where I would be asked to speak. But of course, I also was asked to speak at uh, Federalist Society events. And I could see that, uh, that ACS people were working extremely hard and doing well, but facing a, you know, sort of a wall of money uh, from the power of, of the big funders, the big donors that give to the Federalist Society. So I thought, this is an opportunity for me to use whatever skills I may have to advance an organization that is completely unique. I mean, 200 student chapters, 50 lawyer chapters. There, there simply is no other uh, progressive legal organization. And I enjoy uh, both uh, the, the students and I enjoy the law and I enjoy the political side of it. So I thought there's a chance for me to do this. This would be ideal. So it's my turn. Uh, as an out, you know, I talk about my year at ACS. It's kind of humbling to think about the fact that you've been at ACS for half of its life or more. Uh, and that's really incredible. And the value of that is, is shown up. But so I want to know, because it was a, a while back, how did you end up at ACS? And, and actually, how did you first learn about it? Um, so I'll date myself a little bit here. When I, I graduated law school before ACS was founded. So I had not heard uh, about ACS much before I had joined um, as an employee. But I had arrived in DC and um, some, a friend invited me to Constitution in the Classroom, which is a program where we go into our network. So that includes you students in the audience too, of students and lawyers who go to elementary, middle and high schools to teach about the Constitution. And I've always been into the Constitution. So this was kind of fun for me. And I did that program, really enjoyed it and got on ACS's mailing list that way. And so I started attending more and more events after that. And after a, maybe a couple of events, I was like, why don't I work for this organization? I really like what it stands for. I like the network that it's built, what I've learned about it, and the rest is history, as they say. Okay. In all those years, I'm going to take the opportunity to ask another question. What's your favorite, and we always demark, going to be demarcating our time, I think, for a long time in this <laughs> one. What's your favorite pre-COVID ACS memory? And what's your favorite COVID era CACS member? Well, pre-COVID, I, I would say it has to be the in-person activities, including student convention, getting to meet people in person. There's nothing like this network and really engaging with them. And, you know, you end up speaking to uh, members of the network on the phone or through email throughout the year. And then it all builds up to these moments where you meet in person. And it's just so much fun. It's so invigorating. The energy and vibe that you get is just amazing. And I hope we're able to repeat it here in a virtual setting, but in-person never quite replaces that. So that would be my most, um, most memorable pre-COVID. Most memorable post-COVID? I have to say, I've just been impressed by our network, my colleagues on staff, our leaders, in the quality and number of programs and activities that they quickly adjusted to this really strange virtual environment. Everybody just dove in and really gave it their all. And our programming and activities just haven't, they haven't simmered. It's just been, it's been excellent and at uh, such a high level. So I'll throw that question back, those questions back to you, Russ. What's your most memorable pre-COVID memory and uh, COVID memory, post-COVID? My first, you know, pre-COVID memory really is my first connection with ACS at about 15 years ago. Um, I was in the Senate and I was asked to, uh, I was in Florida and asked to come to the University of Miami Law School and speak to this ACS chapter. I really didn't know what it was, but by the time I got done, I understood exactly what, what a gap it was that something like this didn't exist, you know, apart from the Federal Society. Just the fact that progressive lawyers came together and I had a wonderful feeling about it. And, and, and felt good about it, but didn't have a lot of exposure to it until I became president. And then I guess my most, my greatest memory as something that I can see Megan on the screen worked on uh, tremendously 
is what we did last year to adapt to the COVID situation, the virtual graduation. And there were marvelous speakers, but the most moving thing was to see students get recognition with their, the banner of their school all across the country, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents congratulating them. And I thought that didn't happen when I graduated. I, I was happy, my family was there, but I had no feeling of connectivity to the rest of the progressive lawyers in the country and ACS did that even in the middle of COVID. So that's a strong memory for me. That's a good one. And it's something that we're continuing um, just so everybody out there knows because even post COVID it's valuable and something that we discovered during COVID that, <laughs> that we should be doing. So uh, that's a good one. Um, a question for you and Jordan, stop me anytime you need to, but we're gonna keep going like this and, until you do. We do have um, some student questions in the queue for after this one, but I like the hot seat too. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, what's your most um, memorable talk that you've heard at ACS? Well, I guess I have to say the Stacey Abrams last year in the middle of all the things that were going on. Uh, that was just, you know, we were so fortunate to have her speak to us. But, she, you know, here's a person that's just, you know, in, in her own way without being in elected office now has essentially transformed many aspects of our electoral system. So I felt pretty lucky to be a part of an organization that was able to have her speak and to listen to her. What about you? For me, it was a panel that we had at our national convention a couple of years ago. It was on progressive prosecutors. That was just amazing. Um, the quality, the content, um, it was all standing ovation afterward. And we had to drag people out of the room to go to the luncheon next because it was so powerful. It featured Adam Foss, Aramis Ayala, uh, Wesley Bell, Aisha Braveboy, Marbury Stolly Butts. It, it was just, that was, and it, we have the recording for that. So I hope afterward that our, my colleagues will share that with all of you. To me, it's kind of a must see. I loved it. So, so what are you most looking forward to once the COVID is over? visits with our, our chapters. I, that's such a highlight to me. I want to meet people in person. We love the entire chapters team, um, DNA overall, our Department of Network Advancement, me, Russ, you. Um, that's where the rubber really meets the road, meeting people in person. And so we like to um, get on the road, go visit chapters, talk to our members, and we really can't wait to be with all of you out there soon. How about yourself? And then we'll turn to Megan. <laughs> Same thing. I want to get back to Howard University. I, I promised people at law schools in Sacramento that I'd get there and I couldn't do it. I want to get down to UT in Austin where my great niece uh, is, is uh, 1L and joining us for this. Of Philadelphia, of course, the Wisconsin chapters. And yes, Chicago, Megan, as long as the audience are White Sox fans and not Cub fans. <laughs> I can guarantee that. <laughs> I'm Megan Paulus. I'm the Vice President of Network Advancement with ACS. We have four minutes, so I'm going to do some lightning round questions. Um, thank you, Zanel and Russ, for um, being open to putting each other on the hot seat and taking some questions. Um, first question, and Russ, I'm going to ask you to answer this one. How do you think students can leverage the virtual environment to affect change? Well, you know, it's a horrible tragedy that's hit this country. But the truth is that before this, it would not have occurred to people to link up chapters that are in completely different parts of the country. And yesterday I saw it done brilliantly, where the Madison chapter they had a program with the Austin, Texas chapter on the history of presidential debates with Brady Williamson, who was like basically been the Democratic debate coach for, for generations and is from here in Madison. So that ability to not only get a good speaker, but to say, hey, I'm doing this with people in California. I'm doing this with people in Texas. I'm doing this with people in Florida at the same time is something we shouldn't lose even after we um, get out of this COVID environment. That's great. Thank you. Um, Zanel, do you have any tips on maintaining relationships that students build at these virtual events? Oh, great question, and absolutely. And I'm so glad you, that question was asked because I have to tell you, our network of lawyers, it's their number one complaint after these events. They meet with you amazing students in all the activities that we set up, whether it's a coffee matchup, a dinner, um, and conversations uh, that you have. 
and they say the student dropped me afterward I never heard anything from them and so we strongly encourage you to follow up and there are so many ways that you could do that one is an obvious one immediately after thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me it was such a pleasure to get to know you if you didn't get to know them shooting them an email or um, something you know maybe posting and tagging via Twitter or whatever social media they might be on to say I really enjoyed your talk would love to learn more about this line of work you'd be surprised and especially in a virtual environment people are more willing and able to meet with you and respond to you it just takes outreach most people will not do it and so you'll really stand out by doing so and should feel comfortable doing so completely um, next question, and this could be either of you. How how do you think law students can use ACS for leadership training opportunities? I'll start with that. Um, look, it, it, there is, it's good to, to obviously network with people. And if you want a job in the, in the government or if you want to be a judge, and this is an opportunity to do that. But let me uh, make a pitch here for something that I'm very familiar with. And that is the ACS network if you think you might want to run for office. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing it, to, to be able to be part of your local ACS lawyer chapter and get to know people in your community. Uh, if you're thinking about going into politics, that's a great group of validators. Uh, and you can go and maybe there'll be somebody there who you decide you want to support that they want to run for office. So maybe they'll support you. And you'll find that that's going to be a very important and long lasting network of supporters who will be with you all the way because the connection is, is ideological and progressive. It's not, what have you done for me lately, which unfortunately is too, too common in politics. So, you know, I would make a pitch for that. And I think we're going to have a program and leaders from the law that, that relates to this topic. That's right. Zanelle, any parting thoughts before I turn it back over to Jordan? Um, Listen, the best way to uh, take advantage of this network is to fully engage with it. Let us know what it is you want to do, where you want to be. Use your chapter uh, to mutually benefit you. So if there's an area that you're interested in, host a program on it. You get to know the speakers. You develop those relationships organically. It's pretty amazing. So use your chapter. Um, definitely engage and let us know how, how we could help. Russ, any last word? I want to thank Zanel for being really pretty nice to me during this thing. <laughs> that was great. Thank you both so much. And I'll turn things now to Jordan. Thank you, Megan. Uh, and thank you also, uh, Russ and Zanel, for, for that great roundtable. Uh, we're so excited to share some amazing programs coming up over the next few days, starting with a discussion on the role of the state attorneys general featuring the attorney general for the state of Washington, Bob Ferguson, that will kick off here shortly uh, at 425 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can submit your questions to the Q&A before, during, and after the session. Additionally, we love seeing all of your engagement on the Whova app already. And if you haven't, don't forget that you can connect with ACS staff and your fellow ACS student leaders, as well as earning points by participating on our community board. Next week, we will use those points to determine our top engager on the app and send them some ACS swag. Congra congratulations to Ambrose Dawson, Patience McHenry, and Karen Lilly, who are currently in the top three on the leaderboard. We're gonna take a quick break right now and we look forward to seeing you back here in 10 for our state AG panel at 425.